What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Automotive Training News with your co- with your host, Mr. Rick Bello. I'm Eric Nichols, your co-host with our special guest today. It's, listen, we got a huge lineup today. Um, huge. huge. Today we have Michael Lewis here in the studio with us who is sponsoring this episode and will talk about publishing uh, the books that we... Actually, we have a couple books we're going to go over with today that he's published. Um, and we have Mr. Val uh, Mazan today with us, who Richie calls a BDC genius. And, of course, my favorite person in the world, Mr. David Castillo on the Richie, Veter- Richie Bello Veteran Institute. Um, you know, before we start, Val, I, you know, I think it's appropriate to bring us up to date what you and Mike are doing uh, with your third and fourth book coming out in 2020. Oh, great. So we got... Here it is, guys, right there. Michael Lewis, great author, amazing content. This book took a very long time to come up with, so we got it. This book's basically, you know, our reputation, how to brand yourself and all this. It's a great book. It's going to be out. When is that going to be out? Uh, we should have it ready for the NADA event. So. Good, great. So it'll be February. It'll be out in February. I figured February the 15th through the 20th. So those guys that are close to me, my circle, I shared with you uh, the book already. Now I'm doing it out publicly. So it's going to be a great book. And thanks a lot. If anybody wants an advanced copy, you might find it on eBay later for a large sum of money. And that's not me selling it. (laughs) So, uh, and then talking about really, really Val. Val. I, I mean, I know you for quite some time. Yes. I, I remember when this whole BDC started. As a lot of people know the Nicholson Group was one of the first companies that have a BDC installed. And the only store in the country we did it was at Apple Honda. There was no other one. There was no Penske or nothing like that. I was part of that implementation process with Reynolds and Reynolds Sales Vision back then. Okay, with Dr. John Minarchik and Dana Blumo, and Val was part of all this infrastructure that we did. Now, let me just say this, okay? We got the idea in Houston, Texas, okay? I was at Charlie Thomas. They had phone rooms for salespeople. We called them detention rooms because a salesperson had to be in this room for three hours in 92. I believe the year was 92, 93. So we put that together because we saw other stores doing something. It was okay, but it was not really good because salespeople used to hate it. They they were the named it detention rooms. So then I flew out to the Northeast. I was put there by the Nicholson Group at uh, Garston Motors back then, and that's where we installed this. And Val, I want to talk to you because you were the process, a lot of process and a lot of thought process behind this, right? Give me back then the idea and what you do today that you do a tremendous job in bringing this to the next level. Well, the main thing happens here is number one thing is about appointments. We have to set the appointments, but most importantly, they got to get the appointments to show. And your show rate has to be 65, 70% of those set appointments. And what what happened in the beginning, there wasn't a lot of buy-in. They didn't really have a process. You just get on the phone and talk about anything or everything. They didn't really know that they had to talk about certain things, what was the hot buttons, how to build relationships. And in today's market, it's even, even more important, especially with that inbound call. We'll talk a little bit about that inbound call for a second, because that inbound call, we all know that people spend somewhere in the neighborhood about 14, 16 hours online before even picking up that phone. Once they pick that phone up, what they're doing, they're calling four or five different dealerships. And what they're really doing is eliminating those dealerships. They want to know who the person they want to work with. What is that main salesperson or BDC rep that they want to work with? Who is the most professional? Who builds that best uh, rapport with them? And then, of course, then they're going to come into the dealership. And once they come into the dealership, we know that 85% of those people have already decided to buy. The challenge here is that once they come in, what do we do with them? And that's a whole different training. But the main thing is get that point to show. And I teach one of the things called a mental drive technique. Not only do you set the appointment, but you do a mental drive technique, getting them to that dealership. Because we know a lot of times that uh, they've called four or five different dealerships. 
what happens there as they get mixed up and they end up at ABC motors instead of, you know, one, two, three motors. So what happens there is, okay, now they're, they're there. Once they're there, we know the salespeople say, oh, that guy, he left for the day, but I'm here to help you, or he doesn't work here anymore, or whatever the case may be. So the main thing is that those appointments are very, very important on how you set them, how you get them to your dealership. And you have to set them with specific dates and times. You got to funnel it down. You have to give them choices. You know, are you looking a uh, great choice, by the way? You know, now that you choose your vehicle, what's a good time for us to get together? This afternoon, this evening work better? Okay, they say the evening. Are you thinking around four or five o'clock in the evening or later in the evening, seven or eight? And you just funnel it down. Once you funnel it down to a specific date and time, then you have to make sure that they understand that it's very important that they come to that dealership at that particular time. So you give them your undivided attention. And you know, I'm glad you said that because one of the things with your training is that I know you inspect your dealership, right? So there's a lot yeah. of trainers out there that don't really do the mystery shopping or inspect the people you've trained. And you know, one of the things with training is you're in the store for four or five days, you leave. Correct. It's not enough time to create a habit. So what happened with the industry? Well, real simple. What happened with the industry? We went from live to online training. You do your live and the online training is the consistency. It's the follow up. So you got to create a habit for these guys, right? Now, I have a family member that I called up a dealership to put him in and they put him in and he's really getting drill down training tremendously and online training okay now why online because of the repetitious but us as trainers if there's no inspection on how we're training our people we're not really being really successful and one of the things about you val because you were a corporate trainer for call source which is a humongous company amazing what you did there really really crazy uh -huh. Right. One of the things I want to talk to you about is that inspection that you have, that process. You want to share that with us? Right. You want to, you want to, you want to inspect what you expect. And with all these, you got, you got call source, you got car wars, you got uh, call bright. You want to make sure that you listen to some of those some of those calls that are coming in. You want to see how you could better them. You want to make sure that they're following the process that's written. Not every. How can I say this? Every dealership has a little bit of a different process. They have, you know, BDCs that are answering and, and you know, the leads are answering their internet leads. They have BDC that only takes, um, they, they only take inbound calls or they're only doing outbound calls or they're only doing the follow-up calls. All processes work as long as you, you work the process and you keep them on that process. Management has a big role in, in, in all of this because they got to be they got to be there with them. They have to have early management intervention is what I call it, at EMI. And what I mean by that, they got to be ready to get on the phone right away. They got to get ready to confirm that 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 customer. See, when you set an appointment, you know, the likelihood of them showing up if you've done a great job is about 60, 65 percent. Once you get a manager, an actual sales manager, general sales manager, whatever manager, and they confirm that that appointment, your chances of them coming in go up another 10%. So now you got a chance about 75% that they're going to make it to that dealership. But, you know, I always say, you know, players play the game, but it takes a team to win a championship. So not, it's not only the BDC, it's not only your salesperson, but it's also your managers that all have to come together and make this happen. You know, I use Facebook as a learning tool, a recruitment tool, and also to see the other trainers. So there's a, a tra there's a couple of trainers out there that put what store they're in in training, right? Okay, so I go and wait for that live, and I don't know if it's recorded to live, but the next couple of days I follow up that store. Do you know, and they're supposed to be really good trainers, I call it the five bad habits they still have. I call up, I say I'm in a rush, I gotta call them back. One objection, bang, they right away say, okay. Call us when you have time. Okay, now let me tell you this, all right? I, I pay attention to that very closely. And the reason I pay attention to that, Val, is because I wanna, I'm looking for top notch trainers with this VET program top-notch mm -hmm. I'm not interested and 
I really got my heart in this for the last four and a half years. But with you, I know what you're about. So what advice would you give a trainer as far as inspecting? What are the, the stuff that you do and what should somebody else do? And then on that note, I want to give it right to Eric because he's got a lot of questions. Okay, well, first and foremost, um, as me, I'm a different type of trainer. I've been told I'm a different type of trainer because I'll sit there and whether what it, I'll get on the phone, I'll teach them, hey, this is how you handle this phone call. This is a, your mannerism. This is the way your voice inflection should be. It all plays a key role. We're directors of first impressions. And so I'll get on the phone and show them that how easy it is. I'll make a couple of a couple calls. I'll take a couple of objections. I'll also set a couple of appointments, do the whole process, the mental drive technique. And uh, Lord and behold, they're showing up to the dealership. I think most trainers need to do that more often than just being a talking head, just saying, okay, you need to do this. You need to do this. This is what you need to do. But then you follow up with your, with your client. You've got to go back and follow up and you don't wait two or three months and say, okay, I'll be back in two or three months. See if the process is working. No, what you need to do is you need to follow up the following week to make sure that they're doing it. You need to even do a couple of, uh, you know, blind calls just to see if they're following the process. And a coach, you, you want to be able to call them back and coach them on some of the things, listen to a couple of the calls that the inbound, whether it's an inbound or outbound call, and, and see what are some of the things that they can improve on. And I think most trainers aren't doing that. Most trainers are coming in, they're doing the training, and then they're leaving and they're forgetting about their client. I think that's the worst thing ever. I think you need to stay on top of it. And not only that, you need to train the management team to continue to train, hire, train, motivate. Because motivation is very important. You got to have the people motivated. See, before, like you were saying, when the BDCs first came out, yeah, there were boiler rooms and everybody used to get in there, but they didn't understand how important the phone call really was. They didn't have a process. They didn't have any type of training. If they had training, they were told what to do, not how to do it. There's a difference on telling somebody what to do compared to showing them how to do it. Actually, two topics I was going to discuss with you. Number one, you hit on morale. Morale is the biggest thing in a dealership, especially in a phone room. If your morale in the phone room's down, your appointment count is going down, hands down. Um, the people who you have talking to customers, your BDC reps, your BDC manager, director, whoever, has to be in the right state of mind. They have to come to work knowing that they're going to be talking to customers, and they have to have that energy and excitement to get these people in the door. Would you agree with that? Oh, I agree 100%. I mean, that's the most important thing. It's enthusiasm. Man, And without enthusiasm, if you're enthused, the person on the other side of the phone, they're going to get enthused. Hey, great choice, by the way. Why did you choose the all-new 2019 Sentra? You know, just being excited about it. Hey, by the way, who's the lucky one? Who's the vehicle for? I like to ask them that question. Why? Because I want to know who the vehicle is for. So when I set the appointment, I want the decision makers to be there. I want the person who's going to get the, who, who's going to get the car to be there as well. It all begins in the first, team, the first 15 seconds. That's what sets the tempo for the whole transaction. And I like to always start off with something real simple. Say, hey, thanks for calling ABC Motors. This is Val. I can help you. Oh, great. Hey, I've seen online I have a two, uh, you have a 2019. Uh, it's blue in color. It's so on and so forth. First, hey, that's a great choice, by the way. Um, who am I speaking with? Who do I have the pleasure of speaking with? And then you just go on and, and just go through the whole script. And it's, I'm not a script type of guy. Yes, I write scripts, but it's just a guideline. You have to put your own personality. We all know that product knowledge and personality are key in this industry. But what's number one is the personality. Personality is number one because they, 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 the product, they already know about the product. They buy, the number one reason they buy from a, uh, from a dealership is what? The salesperson. The number two reason is the dealership. And of course, the number one, th uh, the number three reason is the product. They know they could probably buy the product anywhere. That's why when they're calling and they're eliminating these, these other dealerships, they want to know who they want to work for. Who do they, uh, who, they want to know who they're going to buy for, buy from. And with that said, then they build that relationship with that salesperson or that BDC person. It's very important to have a great morale. It's very important to be enthusiastic. Never beat up your salespeople because in reality, there's a lot of managers out there uh, that just say, you know, just get them in, get them in, get them in. You know, these guys, they're new. 
you know, even the veterans sometimes haven't been trained properly. I've, I've trained a lot of veterans in this in this industry, and they've learned a lot from my training. Wow, I never thought that that approach would work. You know what? It's, it's given me a second wind. I want to go out there and try it. And, and behold, they do a great job. And next thing they know, they're selling more cars and, of course, making more money. The, the point that you said, you know, it's the first 15 seconds when, when you talk to someone on the phone. It's, you know, it's funny. Yesterday we had a snowstorm going on. It was We had snow outside, you know, everything else. And night customers calling up. And I always thought, it's a great day at Apple Honda. People like, it's a great day. What are you talking about? It's snowing. I go, no, it's always a great day here. It always lightens up the mood. Um, but the big thing that you touch base on is, is, and I hear this all the time, is you have trainers come in. They train people. You know, okay, great. They train the manager. The manager goes through it. If, you, if your manager is not willing to get on the phone with customers and show his department or her department how it's done, you know, you have to really reevaluate that. I, I know a bunch of big deal groups that have BDC managers, not even directors, managers that are non-working managers. And I don't believe in that at all. I believe, you know, for example, every fall, I'm a working manager in my department. I set majority of the appointments because that's this is how I get paid. I get paid the same way my guys do, essentially, just on a little bit different scale. Um, but ultimately, you know, every phone call I take, it doesn't matter what it is, I leave it on speaker. I do that because I want my team to hear how a phone call should go. And all day long, right. my guys will be on the phone or they'll, or, or they'll listen to me. I've had guys stop and come in and just sit down and listen to me on the phone. And that's how it should be done. Lead by example. Don't lead by yes, telling yes. someone what to do. You're 100% right. I mean, sales managers are really managers. What should they do? They should manage. They should manage their days. They should manage their daily work, their daily work plan. They should help their salespeople because without their salespeople, what's going to happen? What, what's going to happen? You need to have a good, good leadership. And most managers are almost like most salespeople these days. They're almost like order takers. Too. They're just waiting for the next deal to hit their desk. There's more to management than just desking a deal. Desking a deal is, you know, you need to know, okay, what type of uh, credit they are, okay, what bank I'm going to send them to. But it's more than just that. It's, it's, it's going early, early management intervention once again. I even train managers on going out there in the early stages and meeting their customers up front, saying, I'll give you an example. For instance, um, you're at a dealership and you see one of your salespeople with a customer. I like to go out there and introduce myself. Hey, my name is Val. I'm just one of the managers. Want to introduce myself, make sure that Joe's taking really good care of you. Hey, by the way, don't worry about numbers or anything. That's my department. I'll take care of everything. You know, you're going to go with Joe. He's my product specialist. He's going to take care of all your needs as far as finding the right car that best fits your needs. When you're all done, come on inside and we'll go over some options with you. Fair enough. They go, oh, yeah, no problem. Now you got now you got early management intervention, number one. Now these customers, who do they always want to talk to when they're ready to do a car deal? The manager, right? They always want to talk to the manager because they know they're the final decision maker. So just even on the phone, if they could even get on the phone, hey, I overheard your guys' conversation, grab the phone and start talking to them. Hey, this is this is Val. I just want to introduce myself real quick. I understand you're working with Joe. Hey, we got some great deals going on. By the way, I just wanted to understand one thing. How did you hear about the big sale going on this week? You know, and then you you just get them excited. You, it's a now buy now program, right? Once the customers in your in your dealership, we know through NADA. That 1.2, they visit 1.2 dealerships before buying. So we know that once you're at your dealership, they're going to buy from you. It doesn't matter how you treat them, you know, with dignity and respect, while keeping in mind their time is valuable. Because in today's world, everybody's about time. Everybody's working work as, as on time, you know, with, with school, with kids, with basketball, with baseball, with all the things that are going on. No, you know, you know you, you've, you've touched on so many big points out there, especially for BDCs and people listening. Um, you know, guys, I, I say this time and time again. Your BDC, the only reason for a BDC is to set appointments. The whole purpose of a phone yes. call is to set appointments. That's why they have been. That's why BDCs were created. Um, you know, not to go too far off topic, but being in the holiday uh, spirit, as well as Richie and I being strong adv advocates for camaraderie and the, you know, the dealership and automotive in, in general, um, you know, 
Give us you. What do you think uh, morale? Um, how do you think morale plays into business? What do you think, Mike? You're in business for for a long time. How do you think morale plays into the demographics of a business? Uh, I would say that it's critical. Uh, you know, if you've got one person that's really down, it's so easy for them to pull everybody else down. Mm -hmm. And just the opposite is true. It's uh, in neurolinguistics, they call it pacing. Mm -hmm. And you can go in there and you can literally match someone's pace and then start to get more energetic. And pretty soon you're real excited and they're going to come right along. So you you. Build up. So it's critical to, to keep the morale up. You know, it, it's it, it's funny. There's a face. There's a uh, post on Facebook that goes exactly like that. It's, and it says something like, um, "If you have a bowl of fruit and you have one bad piece of fruit and you put it in there, it will turn everything else bad." Yeah. So you have to be careful of that, no matter what it is. And you know, usually when it's something with morale, it's if you catch it right away, it's usually something small. It's usually a little thing that you can easily change. Um, I mean, Richie, you've been in dealerships f for your whole life almost. You know that better than anyone. You were a general manager, you were a trainer, you worked for a bulk, you've done it all. You've seen it all. What are your feelings on the whole morale situation? The morale is very important. And, you know, one of the things I got to say, there's a big difference in BDC. There's a difference between a BDC taking an incoming call and a BDC actually prospecting. Mm -hmm. They don't know how to prospect because when people call a customer, they're trying to sell them something. Right. Well, real truth of the matter is, here's the process, guys. When you're calling a customer, you call your service customer. Mr. Jones, this is Richie from ABC Motors. The reason I'm calling you is because we work on a wish list here. They're going to say, what is that? Okay, the vehicle you have that you owned uh, three years ago, and you're still coming to our service department. First, let me thank you for you coming to our service department. Second, the pricing on our used cars has gone extremely high. We're interested in purchasing your vehicle. We've got about four to five customers that are looking for that type of model. You see, that's prospecting. It's about that what's in it for the customer you're calling the customer and telling them your lease is up all this that they're going to go somewhere else yeah because now what's going to happen oh now you plant the seed you gotta know how to prospect yep okay and the productivity on a bdc department 90 percent of a customer that's in the market for a car 30 percent or 20 percent when they got a prospect as a matter of fact they don't like prospecting. Why? Because this, no, I'm not interested. Rejection. BDC people don't know how to deal. Rejection is a problem. There is no trainer that trains them that. Now, you have a problem because these are opportunities. And like I always said, dealers are spending 60 to 70 grand a month smack down the middle between Google Ads, Facebook, AutoTrader, and all these other people. Guess what? They got deals in their data. In their DMS, they got deals. <laughs> There's a ton of deals. There's 1.2 million consumers in the market every 30 days. Those are not my numbers, guys. Those are IHS numbers based on registrations. People that their leases are up and their finances up, number one. Now add another percentage of that, which I have that data to customers that have their kids in college and are graduating, all right, that are in the market of the car. Now you add first time buyers. Okay, now you add people that get into an accident on, and they total their car. Oh my God, when I start talking to you about numbers, we're up to 1.92 million, and I have all those analytics through our strategic partners of City Twist and IHS. Hello? Now, those are people in the market, okay? Now, just look at all those numbers. Okay, guys, let me tell you something. 
prospect your dealership. You're spending 70 grand. I know yeah. dealerships that submit co-ops for 40 grand, okay? Try to maximize everything they can. They're spending stupid money. And you know what? I look at their DMS, dealer management system. They got 100 deals there if it's worked right. I got to say this. I know one company that works his stuff perfect right, and that's in Sohn Jr. All Sansom Jr. manages his data, and you know why? He's one of the top guys in his marketplace because of that. He spends very little on marketing and spends enough to be out there, but maximizes his ROI. And you know, Val, what I want to touch base is imagine a program, imagine a program to increase the productivity of your BDC on prospecting. They don't know how to do it. Oh, you know, it's funny you mentioned that because I just off a training manual that had to do with the service drive. Now, I've worked with a really good friend of mine that's doing it right now that's kind of put some stuff together, and he's at a big Honda store in, um, in Orange County. And he's pulling out, just out of a service drive, 40 to 50 new deals a month just out of service drive. It's a whole different department. He has a BDC making the phone calls. He has somebody working the service drive um, on these appointments. And it's, it's, they're knocking it through the roof. What's the beauty about this is you're absolutely right, is your, your, your advertising dollars is minimal, number one. Number two, your chances of making more gross profit per deal is very, very good because these people aren't really shopping. They're not really out there online looking at all the advertisements. And, and number three, you're getting a really good trade-in vehicle, certifiable trade-in vehicle which is very, very, very good for the dealership. And now, not only are you making maybe a, a 3000 on on the on the sold unit, but now you're making another 3000 on the trading that you're bringing in. So in reality, that car deal, that those 50 deals that he's doing, he's averaging somewhere in the neighborhood close to about 220 to 250 grand per month, just out of the service drive. But you need some skilled people to go in. It's a different type of approach. And I've just finished writing a training manual for a Nissan store that I'm going to be rolling out here in, in the new year, as the new year comes. It's a different department. You set them up differently out of the service department. You get into, of course, your CRM, Reynolds, Reynolds and Reynolds Contact Management, dealer stock. They all have equity mining tools. But you're absolutely right, Richie. That's the way of the world right now. That's where a lot of dealers need to start going towards is, is setting it up. But setting it up right. A lot of go in there half, you know, loaded, and they try. They put a regular salesperson in there. Go get a customer. Go do this. But unless you have a set process with with the right the right personnel in there, you actually need a manager whether it's, it's just an internet manager, some type of manager that knows a car deal and knows how to put it together. And you get a couple of greeters out there, you're going to knock it out of the park. No, you know, I, I agree. And, you know, we talked space on a lot of big topics today. Um, and it's definitely we something we wanna, it's something we definitely want to go back to later on. Um, you know, I do want to thank you for being on today. Uh, we want to do we do want to get some time with Mike and go to his video and see exactly what we could do. Val, it was a pleasure having you on today, and we hope to have you back soon. Thank you. Val, good seeing you. Talk to you later today. Nice to meet you. All right, take care. So, Mr. Lewis, we're going to take a look at a video from you in a second um, about publishing books and, and also helping write them. Yeah, we go through the whole process, and uh, I think the video will explain it quickly to people who I am and where I come from, so I don't have to spend their time to do that. <laughs> Let's take a look, guys. Real estate investor, developer, and startup expert turned book publisher and best-selling author. Mike has personally mentored and worked with some of the sharpest entrepreneurs in the world, like Brian Tracy, Michael Gerber, Tom Hopkins, Lou Brown, Tim Johnson, Tom Beale, Jason Myers, Mike Philosame, Bill Walsh, and countless others. 
He has taken his own companies from zero to over 100 million in sales, made as much as $1 million in one day. As the publisher at the world's top ghost publishing firm, branded Expert Publishing, Mike has created and published over 370 best-selling authors and published over a dozen of his own best-selling books. Mike's passion for turning the real-world experiences of successful entrepreneurs, CEOs, and seasoned business experts like you into best-selling books that will positively impact your lives. Please welcome Mike Lewis, the book guy. So, those of you out there know I, I call Rick, uh, Richie Uncle Richie, and there's a, there's a reason for that because he's like my uncle. But Richie always taught me that you have to have that guy. So, I love the fact that now I have the book guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that being said, everything. Um, Tell us a little bit about the books you're helping Richie write. And really, I mean, how do you, where do you even start to write a book? How do you start to write it? How do you, uh, the ideas, we, I, I'm dumbfounded. I, I'll go through the process perfect. real quickly. But before I do that, I want to comment on something that Val said. And that's that most of the people are doing a tremendous amount of front end research on the internet mm -hmm. before the salespeople or the, appointment centers get a chance at all and that's where having a book having a good website creating content for people it raises the trust factor and trust is the biggest issue salesmen have always dealt with you know I've been a salesman since I was well I had to wait till I turned 18 to get my real estate license but I was selling way before then and I've sold all my life these guys I work with are some of the best salesmen and sales trainers in the world uh, but the first thing people do now is Google you. Oh, yeah. And anybody that thinks they're not Googling the salesman, our <laughs> sorry about that. statistics show that you're going to lose in between 50 and 60% of the actual referrals that people give you because people found something online they didn't like. It's not always a bad thing. It might be that they saw how shiny your dealership was and how pretty your cars were and didn't think they could afford yeah. it. But typically they find something on social media uh, or something uh, in the Google search that they decide, I'm just not gonna do business with this guy, even though I was referred to him. But just by cleaning up your Google search and your social media, you can double or triple the number of referrals that you get in the door exclusive of what the dealership is bringing in. So it's really important. And the other thing I got to stress is that image that you create for yourself follows you throughout your whole career. So, I oh, mean, yeah. you know, if, if you've got a, a reputation as being very honest, very hardworking, taking good care of your customers, it doesn't matter what dealership you're at because we all have the same pond of cars to fish out of. The difference is that trust build up from the salesman. And if you do it right, they're going to trust you and respect you before they even come on the lot. Oh, 100%. And, and that's, that's part of what the book does. Uh, the reason that Richie and I are writing this first book that we are as co-authors is we want to show the automobile industry how to brand themselves. Sales trainers are pretty good at branding themselves, although in the auto industry, they're not quite as good as they are in other industries. And uh, I'm talking about people like Brian Tracy, and Michael Gerber, yep. and Tom Hopkins, and, and other people that I've worked with. Uh, it's critical that people in the car industry start to understand that there's way, way more to bringing a customer in the door than just the ads that the dealers pay for. The, the salesman can do a tremendous amount of good with, you know, I mean, you want people to come in and say, I want to buy my car from Joe. I saw Joe on Facebook or I saw Joe on LinkedIn or wherever it is that I saw him and I like Joe. And like is their way of saying they trust Joe. And if they already trust Joe, it's it's a lay down. I mean, you know, yep. it's just that easy. So so that's what Richie and I are writing the new book about is all the different ways. And I'm talking about getting you media exposure you know one 30 second shot on the nightly news is going to do way better for you than 30 or 40 car commercials oh yeah and you want all of the producers that book people on these shows to know if they got a car question 
you're their car guy and you want them picking up the phone and saying, hey, you know, I need two minutes, three minutes on tonight's show. Can you come into the studio? You want to be the guy that gets that call because I guarantee that gives you way more uh, buyer authority than anything you can do with paid advertising. Oh, yeah. And, I'm glad you, you touched base on that about the, the media. I mean, the one that you see all the time who who's are, started out as a car guy, the biggest one I could think of is Grant Cardone. I mean, you see him on MSNBC, you saw him on Fox News, you saw him in all other places. But, I mean, you're right. That 30 seconds or minute that they go to him for something, you're now known as that uh, voice in the industry. And it's the same thing in the dealership. I, you know, I, I agree, the branding and getting your name out there, the biggest thing that you can do now, and if you can't get yourself on, on the local media, that's understandable, but there's social media. You can go on and start posting your stuff. I have someone in my dealership, a, a kid, Tim, who, um, you know, great guy, great salesman. He's doing an additional six to 10 deals a month from just posting little content here and there. Those things are critical because the TV station is going to do the same thing your buyers do. They're going to Google you. Yep. You know, so the more good content you've got out there, the more that they think you're an educator and an advocate, the more likely it is that, that these people are going to want to do business with you. And it's just, it's not that difficult, but you need to be consistent and you also need to be congruent. You know, you can't be talking on LinkedIn about what a level headed, hardworking businessman you are, and on Facebook have a fifth of liquor in your hand and a lampshade on your head. Oh it's yeah, just, it's just not going to work. You've got to stay congruent, and that's that's what we're hoping to do with this book is teach them how to do that because we want them speaking in front of large groups. You know, we want we want to show them how to use reasons to get in front of the local charity groups to get in front of the optimists and the Kiwanas, the mooses and any other animals yeah. that are in the neighborhood. <laughs> and it's, we see it as so important that you, the salesman looks at his career as a long-term investment. Some of these things aren't going to, I mean, the media is not going to start calling you up two weeks after your book comes out. There's a lot of steps you have to do. But the thing is, it starts to, it's like a flywheel. Once it starts turning, it yep. builds momentum, and it gets easier and easier as that momentum builds. And that's why, you know, we've, we've got to stop just hoping that somebody's going to walk in the door and we're going to have sales deal to sell them. And, and I used to sell 100-plus houses a year, guys. I, I understand what it's like to sell, but you've got to make the sale long before you talk to the people, and that's just the way it is nowadays. And and Richie's going to have some awesome tools to train people on how to do that. Right now, we're working quite a bit with the car trainers, and that because they're the ones that influence the dealership. Oh, 100%. So, so we're working real hard to publish several of the more well-known car dealers or car trainers. I don't want to say who because, you know, they have to know. Now, and the other thing i got to say, you know, I was on a call the other day, Michael, with the uh, a really good a, a guy that writes books. He's in our space. I mean, I don't really use a ghostwriter. Well, here's what I answered him. This book here, Mike has spent hours and hours and hours on getting in my head, right? Taking what I have here and putting it on paper. Now, guys, listen. Everybody knows I'm dyslectic, so I can't write a book and say it's me only because really, really, I wouldn't know how to do it, right? You, it's still your content, okay? It is still your content. I, for example, myself, everybody knows that years ago, I was hammered on Google. I fixed that myself with no company, no nothing, okay? Now that's part of branding yourself. Reinventing yourself. That's what it's about. And I'm not going to write something unless I don't know how to do it. That's the school I come from. Well, so it's a proven thing about branding and reinventing yourself because we all have failures. And let me tell you something. I love failures. As a matter of fact, I've said in this live show, I get involved with something when I got 75% 
risks to fail. Do you know why? Because I'm going to learn and learn and learn. And there's going to be a day that I'm going to become real, real rich. Not because of anything, because of my failures. The other thing I want to say, the automotive people that know me, you know I've been working four years plus on my Mike has been my partner a long time. Within those four years, Mike has helped that institute a great deal. So these trainers out there that are backing me up and want to be, I just remember something. I turn you over to Mike, one of the things, he's my partner. He's helped me with this institute. A lot of guys don't know that. But let me tell you, what I've done probably in the last seven to eight years, surround myself with CFOs that have taken businesses to the next level. Let me make that announcement. Michael Lohan, right? Michael Lewis, Dominic DeLeo, Art Pullock. Mike, I want him to say his story because you know Mike for over seven years what he's done, and what businesses he's turned around into ridiculous amount of money. And those are the people I'm around. I'm not around any game players or anything like that. I'm not interested. I'm not really a CFO, or I don't know how to be an operator, CEO, but I have very creative side, and I'm a salesman. So I've surrounded myself around these talented individual. Mike takes every book to number one. I'm gonna let Mike speak about his story. Mike, please share it. Sure. When I uh, got, uh, I, let me start here. I was running a $100 million land development company, building mid-rise condos, marinas throughout the Southeast. And I had a little struggle in 2008, and several Wall Street firms suggested I find a different way to make a living. Well, actually, they insisted I find a different way to make a living. It's, it's amazing what a quarter billion dollar bankruptcy will do for you. But I wanted to break into a brand new industry. I wanted to be in the internet marketing industry because I didn't want to have all those employees again. At, at my height, I had 104 per, um, employees in office and I had 4,000 subcontractors. And at 55, I just didn't want to have that stress anymore. So I decided internet marketing was easy, but you know what? People wouldn't return my phone calls or my emails like they did when I ran a hundred million dollar company. I was used to calling the mayor and having him, of course I'll take your call. You know, now I couldn't get uh, people I wanted to buy stuff from to return my call. And that's the reason I published my first book. And I gotta tell you, it took my wife and I almost two years to publish our first books. And that's pretty much the average is a minimum of 150 to 200 hours to do a book. Wow. And no top end income earner can take that amount of time. They just can't. But I want to stress that the guys that saw how well I started doing with my book immediately asked me if I could do it for them. My wife and I actually loved the process once we, we learned how to do it. And, uh, you know, that's, been history. We've done 800 plus best-selling authors. Now. Oh my God! Wow! And uh, and we love doing it. It's uh, I'm doing one uh, this Sunday that'll hit number one in Amazon. And uh, again, I I can't say who that's for. And the reason that I can't give specifics on that is, with the exception of people like Richie that allow me to co-author, most of my people they have no idea that we help the person write the book. What we do is take them through a whole series of interviews. I could even make you an author, I promise. We we'll take you through a series of interviews. We get all of your information, your knowledge, and your experience. And then I have a staff of writers that subcontract with me that are specialists in the automotive industry. They understand the jargon that you're using and that sort of thing. Because it's you're the author. It's your ideas, your thoughts. But we put it into book prose. You know, we, we make the English look good. And believe it or not, the, sometimes the problem we have is if you're overeducated, you talk way above your buyers. So we have to dumb it down sometimes. 
but uh, Richie and I didn't have that problem. <laughs> it's uh, we try to keep the books at between an eighth and a tenth grade level reading. Okay. Because that is the average in America. Uh, but we also try to make, keep the author's voice so that if his own mother reads it, she, she thinks he wrote it. When we get to that point, that's where it's successful. So this is not ghostwriting. Ghostwriting is simple for us. You know, if you want a book on cryptocurrency, I can have one for you in two, three weeks. But if you want a book that combines all the knowledge and experience that you've gathered over the years, that takes us some time. But your time, it only takes 10 or 12 hours total. But our time is still well north of 100 hours. So while you're saying that, maybe think of something. Um, I want to give a special thank you to Jean Fontana out there because Jean does that for me every week with the show. I send her who the guests are going to be and some basic questions and topics that I think we should discuss. And she sends it right back to me and Richie, always on time, always right. Sometimes I, I get a little yelled at because it's not due when it's supposed to be, but... <laughs> But she does a great job for us in the show, and it's the same thing you do. And I mean, it's you're right. Going through some of the books that, that you have and the big names that you have done it for, it's guys, it's well worth going out there. You you, you have Richie's voice going through the book here. You have Richie's ideas that are now going to um, sometimes be simplified, like you were saying, to make it easier for everyone to understand. You want to know something? Uh <clears throat> really, really, those traders out there, right, that want to write their own or get somebody to help them, that's good. But here's what the product really does. We guarantee you're number one. We do all your marketing, and we have a track record of you succeeding. The other thing is we got a bunch of SEO tools and a bunch of different things, right? So we know with your brand what you could hit real numbers okay uh really i mean you really know what's going on with real numbers and just pay attention to something like that because when you have professionals handling your stuff you're going to be number one yep. you're going to be consistent do three books you're three, number one. You got a good shot of being New York Times. You want to know something, guys? A book today adds credibility. You don't have that. You have no credibility based on what you did. And when you have a track record and you know how to take something from A, B, C, D, E, why not put it out in the book? They say something, right? Learn every day. They also say, if you don't share what you already know, you're going to forget it. Yep. That's a true statement. Do you know why? Because when you have it fresh in your mind and you're always going to, you're always going to keep learning, you're going to be open. And when you share your information and your knowledge, that's what podcast is about, right? Yep. When you share, really sharing makes you much stronger and you help people out. And you want to know something? At the end of the day, we all came to Earth one way. At the end of the day, we're all exiting the same way. It's all about what you've done while you've been here on Earth. That's bottom line. What you've done, how people remember you about. That's what it's about. You know, if you're a negative guy or whatever, you're out always hammering everybody and that's what's going to happen. If you always try to do the best to do the right thing by people and reach out your hand and all that, that's what's going to happen to you. Yep. It really doesn't matter. You can be, you can have Trump's money, Cardone's money. It doesn't matter whose money you can have. At the end of the day, when you leave the planet, you're leaving all the same way. Maybe I'm going to be dressed in in my coffin and Ralph Lauren the other guy's gonna be in a suit I don't know I like Ralph Lauren I don't believe in suits I always used to call them empty suits when I was in the car business and showroom so I used to laugh at them so me I don't wear suits I'm not interested okay but that's the truth so why not put it on paper share it brand yourself what happens you get a better opportunity you can become a high-paid speaker 
you can become a speaker if you haven't been one, or you can really add credibility, credibility to what you're about. And I'm not shy to say, hey, you know what, guys? I don't know what I'm doing. I just have it up here. Let me share and have somebody like Mike that's a professional do it. Because the top guys don't say it, but we've done books. For, and they, they don't say it, but you want to know something? That's who they have. There's a testimony on the video. We're getting ready for a new testimonial, too. You'll be surprised who's on it. <laughs> you guys just fall down on the chair because you want to know something? Too busy to write a book. Imagine. Too busy. I got too much stuff going on. And I got to say something. A lot of people tell me, you know, you're involved in this, involved. You're too much involved. It's all about the team around us, guys. Hire people and get involved. And like, you know, Cardone the other day said on a video, don't have one source of income. Because if you do and that fails, you're done. Have as much stuff you can. And I get involved in a lot of things. They might work. They might not work. They might fail. It doesn't matter. Because you know why you get involved? Because it creates enthusiasm and it creates energy. So those guys that say, wow, this guy's like all over the place. Great. I'm all over the place. But you know what? Financial statements are there. They show it. Whether it works or it doesn't matter. You know what? It creates enthusiasm. And it creates revenue. And that's what bottom line is. So you want to know something, guys? Get involved. Don't have one source of revenue because that's when you got a problem and just keep that in mind and you know i richie you have as you said they do you have so many different things you, you have going on um which brings us to our next guest uh my favorite guy of the show oh yes. sorry richie i love you but i i think i like david a little I love more. David. we're going to go to our weekly uh a meeting with Mr. David Castillo, Director of Veterans Affairs for the Richie Bell Institute of Leadership and Management. David, what's going on, buddy? How was your Thanksgiving? Uh, it was fantastic. How was yours? So, I, uh, what do you got for going on for us this week? What, what uh, any new news? <laughs> yep. Uh, so, what we're doing is we're working a lot with uh, getting a hold of different veterans organizations in several states. Uh, we got. Uh, a pretty long list, actually, in Florida, in uh, Georgia, in Arizona, New York. And what we're doing is st establishing relationships so that we can uh, put the veterans that are part of their organization through our training program so that they can take advantage and really make a good career for themselves, for their families. And of course, that'll benefit the dealers as well. Um, the program is fantastic. My favorite part about it is that it's free to, to the veterans so that they don't have to put any out-of-pocket costs to get training to be able to work. And that's what we're, we're, they're really looking for, is to be able to work and put uh, something towards their life. So it's for, we all know, like I said, it's free the veterans. Um, dealers pay a very low cost. What happens if a veteran doesn't work out with a dealership? We, we give them another one within a certain time frame? Yes, uh, if, for whatever reason, the veteran just doesn't work out. Uh, let's say maybe it's a culture thing uh, or he has particular issues, uh, personal issues that he can't make it work. Uh, we will have another trained veteran to be able to take that spot. And of course, we're going to match it up as best we can with the culture of that particular dealership so that their that uh, attrition rate is minimal, as minimal as we can get it. Perfect. And, and I know uh, it's what, mid-December, we're going to start promoting this heavily out to the dealerships. And I think we have a full launch in, what, January, right? Yep. January 6th is our launch date. We're promoting this uh, starting here in a, a week or two. Uh, and, of course, we're reaching out to the veterans themselves. We'll be signing up through our website, go through the questionnaire, and then we'll have our um, uh, interview and assessment process. And we'll place them where they want to be and where they are best suited to be uh you know some guys are just great salesmen some guys are better at financial and operations some guys are hands-on they want to be in service so we got to match up the people exactly where they need to be and where awesome. they're going to be happy yeah. awesome so again as i always say you're a veteran thank you for your service i'm a veteran um this is the message i would put out and, and i think you'll agree with this 
whether you're a veteran or not, whether you're in the car industry or not, everyone here knows someone who's a veteran. I, I said the statistics a couple weeks back. It's something like since 2016, it's like 22 million veterans are in the active workforce right now. And there's a ton that, that aren't working. So everyone knows a veteran one way or another. So here's what I would say. You want to give a gift to someone this season. If you know someone who might be struggling, a vet who needs a job, who needs training, who um, you know is really just a, a good person that, that, that you want to put out there, where can we send them to, to get them um, you know, hopefully into a new career? What's the website that we can go to or what's the phone number? So the website is richiebellowest.com. Uh, they can go in, uh, click on the link for the sign up to the program or for the application. Uh, they're going to put in basic information like their name, their service, how many years they served, their rank at the time. Uh, and then we'll start the process that way. Uh, either myself or somebody on the team will reach out to them and get their application all put together, get all their data, and they'll, they'll be good to go. I really want to thank you so much effort, David, you've put into it. We're getting ready. Here's the product. We have the automotive traders and we have the automotive dealers. And the book guy. And the book guy. The product that we need, the, well, Mike does a lot of different things for the Institute. He's a partner. But anyway, the products that we need, he's a comedian, this kid, Eric, right? Uh, the products that we need, is the vets, right? So I got very fortunate to call one of our data partners that told mm -hmm. me that they have a list of every vet, and I ordered already, that comes in, perfectly legal, that comes in from the service into the society. But and they also told me you can do age groups. 25 to 38, 25 to 41, whatever age group you want. And it also gives me rankings. <laughs> okay, and it also gives me a little bit of a history of what they did, okay, and how they left, okay? okay? So I've been working on that for the last two and a half, three weeks. One of our data partner has all that information Right. So now what we need to do is reach out to the vets. We should be on a phone call this week. Dave, this last week, I couldn't go on it. I was really sick. The flu, everything. You don't even know. I felt like I went to World War Three. Right. My head was all jammed up. But let me tell you this. We have a tremendous opportunity with this. Right. Because now we really have the vets in a way which is very important because that's the product and it's self-funded we don't need a dollar from the vets that's the other beautiful thing right all the automotive Ooh. vendors that i have five or six of them have already funded this we're up to that i can train up to 50 veterans a month when well, you listen to that 50 veterans a month 50 times 12 and put them in the automotive workforce. And I got more and more trainers jumping in, dedicating their time, dedicating their effort, and dedicating their content, oh. right, for these vets. So it's very, it's very important. You've done a tremendous job out on the road. You've gotten back together with Gene and with the team with tremendous amount of information, thanks to you. We've put this whole thing together because you're a vet and you're out there on the land. And I want to thank you to keep up the good work. You're giving it a tremendous effort. And let's have, we have a call every Monday. This Monday we couldn't do it with the team. So we're going to be back on the call Monday. I, I may be down the road in the next few months uh, after the kickoff on January, maybe in February. I want to invite Eric because he's a he's he's a vet. But the other thing is he's at a dealership doing yep. hands on. I invite him as part of the team on a call. So I'm going to awesome. be talking to Gene about that. I look forward to it. Yeah. So that way we can I really set it off. Well, guys, I hate to do it, but we got to wrap it up. Um, 
Unfortunately, oh, actually, we'll, we're, we're happy to see you guys next week, David. Always a pleasure. But unfortunately, we um, we apologize. The the Christmas party tonight was canceled. Um, we we'll look forward to seeing everyone next week, and we appreciate Mike coming on the show and Val. Um, guys, really, as we always leave off on the show, if you take one thing away from what you learned today, or one thing that Val stated, it can make a world of difference. One thing Mike stated will make a world of difference. Guys, get out there, and the piece of information I'm going to leave you on today is this. Um, Mike used the word before about getting into the car business, used the word career. Not job. A career is something long term. You know, someone once taught me the word job it stands for just over broke. <laughs> um, so, guys, if you're if, if you're serious and you're making this a career, guys, get out there. Pick up Richie's book when it comes out, Branding for Car Guys. Um, look up other books that, that Mike has uh, done. Or if you're a trainer, reach out to Mike. And, guys, get your thoughts on paper. Get your voice heard. And we'll see you next week. And God.